Today's roll and ramble might make some of you guys pretty angry. It might make some of you cheer. But uh, here's the thing. What I'm about to discuss is not a left or right wing thing. And that is by far the biggest problem with it in the modern era. For some reason, up until I think maybe 2012 or so, maybe it even started with the election of Donald Trump in 2016, but uh, at one of those presidential boundaries, we somehow switched in the United States from being a nation that while the left and the right would argue about abortion or gun rights or the limits of free speech or religion or whatever, we all could agree that immigration that was controlled was okay, but that the borders needed to be sealed up and that things needed to be very strictly controlled. That mass migration by people who bypass the system um, and who just come here with no intent to naturalize, uh, no intent to become part of the society, um, but really just to siphon off of the system and send it all back home or something like that, that basically immigration is generally not a good thing unless it is controlled immigration of people that are worthy of coming here and will add to the society and integrate and naturalize and become an actual part of American culture. That does not mean erasing their own culture, but rather becoming American and then adding their cultural formula or recipe or whatever to the melting pot that is the United States. There is a big difference between what we call immigration today and what immigration used to be back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and between that and what immigration used to be a very long time ago, the time period that most people associate with the, the give me your tired, your huddled masses. First of all, I am not an expert on the history of immigration to the United States. I do not claim to know everything or even most things, uh, at least in terms of history. I, I will say that I am somewhat uneducated. I can't really remember all the facts regarding the, um, the classic like World War I and II era immigration policies or any of that. that. That's just not something that I've been interested in. It doesn't affect me. It's history. So you can argue, well, yeah, you know, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. <clears throat> but the bottom line is it doesn't actually affect me today. Um, and it's not that important today. What is important is today and recent history. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I distinctly remember hearing a lot of people talk about immigration. And no matter what letter came after their names on the television, the general discussion was always the same. Politicians basically used illegal immigration, mass migration, um, and offshoring of services and things like that Anything that brought foreigners into the American economy um, to where they effectively replaced existing Americans rather than adding to the pool of them, uh, that was not okay. And it didn't matter if you were on the left or the right. Now, nobody did anything about it. Bill Clinton didn't do anything. George Bush, George H.W. Bush. Oh, I'm sure there were some attempts. You know, there was some showboating, whatever. They didn't really do anything about it. Let's just be honest, okay? Politicians loved, loved immigration. The whole illegal immigration thing, it was a political football for decades, and they got off on it. It was insane how much they got off on kicking the immigration issue around back and forth. Oh, this will be, you know, this will be the presidential term that seals up that southern border. <coughs> This will be the term where we stop just allowing tens of thousands of people a year, which <laughs> that actually sounds like it would be a big improvement compared to today, but we'll stop allowing tens of thousands of people a year to just flood across the border unchecked. You know, we don't know who they are. We don't know what they do. We, we don't know why they're here. We don't know what they're going to do. We have no information on them, but this will be the, this will be the year or the four years or the eight years that we'll get this straightened out. This, this problem will be solved. You know, you elect me, 
and I'll I'll fix everything. I'll I, I'll I'll close the border. I'll build the wall. I'll I'll put security measures in place. I'll add the border patrol. I, I'll do I'll do all this stuff, and it never, ever, ever happened. Um, in fact, <laughs> I'd argue it really just got worse over time. And if you leave things pretty much as they are, and you don't tighten up, see this is the thing. <clears throat> Even in the era of 9-11, the Pass the Patriot Act, which screws Americans over by treating them, basically violating your fundamental rights under the Constitution. So they'll pass this Patriot Act trash fire, which has been renewed every year since, and never should have came to exist in the first place. They'll pass that, but then they still leave the border wide open, and all these terrorists that we were so worried about 23 years ago well, oh, now, now those those terrorists could still come in through the, through the border, and at this point, it's become a meme. You know, the meme of uh, they were on our radar. Like, well, somehow the FBI knows about every single terrorist before they make an attack, yet never seems to actually stop an attack. But when they do stop an attack, for some reason, it's always some like redneck white guy who was tricked on the internet into joining a group of 99% other FBI agents to commit some kind of crime like uh, that stupid Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot. But yeah, anyway, the immigration thing has been a major issue for a long time and no one's really done anything about it until Donald Trump got elected. <clears throat> now say what you will about Donald Trump. I'm aware that Donald Trump is no perfect human being, um, not even close, nobody really is, no politician especially, you'd have to be nuts to be a politician. But Donald Trump, for all of his flaws, for all of the things that he bullshitted and lied about, for all of that, and like, don't tell me he didn't lie about things. Donald Trump lies just like every other politician. It's just that the things that he lies about when he runs his mouth are very different from what he actually does. And there are some things, he was one of the first politicians that actually did what the hell he said he was going to do at least in some respects. And in particular, the border. That whole build the wall thing? Yeah, yeah, he built the wall. He didn't build all of the wall. He was stonewalled at every turn, but he did build some of the wall. And here's the problem with that. Here's why everybody hated Donald Trump building the wall. There, there are two major reasons. Remember how I said for decades, Democrats and Republicans both kick the immigration issue around like a football, a political football. Oh, I'm a Democrat, and I'll solve the illegal immigration problem. Oh, I'm a Republican, and I'll solve the illegal immigration problem. Vote for me. Vote for me. Vote for me. And they never did. Donald Trump made the fatal mistake of doing. And that's the problem. Donald Trump was the first politician to do something substantial to attempt to curb illegal immigration through the southern border of the United States of America. That is why he was so hated. They don't want that to happen because now the political football has been popped. Now politicians can't say, oh, I'm going to solve the illegal immigration problem. Well, okay, Trump and Biden, 2020, what's Biden going to say? Biden can't use illegal immigration as a political football. It's not possible. Now, granted, Democrats were pushing away from that anyway around the time Trump was debating, but... <clears throat> Biden cannot possibly, he cannot do the political football of illegal immigration to get elected. It's become unpopular with the left, but more importantly than that, Donald Trump did something. He actually did something. He actually did something everyone saw. So if Biden shows up and says, well, I'm going to do more than Trump, how can you? Trump was aggressive about it, and look at what he did. He barely got any of it done because it kept getting stonewalled at every turn. So the football has been popped. The, the issue is no longer available. It's dead. And the left was moving away from it anyway because you have to differentiate yourself to get elected, you see. For people to, to vote for you, you have to say, I'm different from your other choice. Because if you're not different from the other choice, what does that make you? Well, it makes you the other guy, but with this one minor change. And at that point, you're not really that different. It's kind of like how Hillary Clinton tried to beat Donald Trump by constantly talking about Trump. And uh, it didn't work very well because she spent so much time talking about Trump that she never really talked about herself. So she didn't differentiate herself. So what is she? Well, she's the, she's the person who 
bleach bit wiped an email server that she was keeping. But you know, you know the story. I don't have to tell you. But the point is, you have to differentiate yourself, and that is no longer a way to do it because Trump ruined it. Trump destroyed that for probably decades to come. And so now politicians can't use that lie to get elected anymore. But also, things have changed quite a bit over the past 50 years. 50 years ago in the United States, we did not have mass outsourcing to India, to um, the Philippines and Costa Rica. You know, basically a bunch of Southern Hemisphere and South and Southern Asia um, countries. We didn't have all that outsourcing. So we did not have all of these would have been American call center jobs um, that were exported to these other countries. That wasn't a thing yet. <clears throat> Businesses couldn't make money by hiring some guy 5,000 miles away to very poorly tell you what the script in front of him said when you called to get tech support for your uh, HP printer, which you shouldn't buy, by the way. Never buy HP printers anymore. They're all garbage. Uh, never, ever buy them. So outsourcing wasn't really a thing. I mean, outsourcing has always existed in some capacity, but mass outsourcing wasn't really a thing. Um, we also, in the 70s at least, we still had not shipped the majority of our industrial manufacturing capacity to China. One of our greatest enemies um, is responsible for building most of the stuff that we need to continue to exist as a relatively comfortable comfortable first world society. So it actually doesn't benefit large businesses if they can't take advantage of poor immigrant, um, illegal, you know, slave labor, basically. Big business loves slave labor. Slave labor that isn't American and thus no one cares about in America, even better. Now, there used to be a time where the left cared a lot about that. Um, the whole thing where, oh, Nike, you know, uses sweatshop labor in India or whatever. The, the, the joke that was going around 10 years ago, there was an image of some Indian woman in a, in a shirt manufacturing sweatshop making a, this is what feminism looks like shirt, which is pretty damn funny. That's basically working for a pittance in a third world country um, doing a horrible job in terrible conditions to make stylized shirts for some Western idiot like me to go out and buy for a few dollars less. Big businesses want to exploit essentially slave labor, a big portion of which is bringing illegal immigrants here or bringing legal immigrants here on restrictive visas that tie them to the, the company that is paying for them to be here that's sponsoring them. Um, because it, it's slave labor, it really is. You know what? A lot of these Indian programmer guys, um, and they run the gamut, okay? I know there's a lot of Indian degree scams. There's a lot of Indian people who show up and they don't have a clue what they're doing. But there, at the same time, there are a lot of Indian people who show up and do have a clue what they're doing and do do the right thing and do have skills and do know just... There are a lot of different kinds of people. Just because they're Indian doesn't mean they're incompetent programmers. Um, the number of Indian people that are exploited both by people in India and by companies here and end up here because of it uh, is staggering. But this, this is what I'm saying. Almost all of, the, um, all of the illegal immigration has to not only stop, but the illegal immigrants need to be rounded up and kicked out of the country. End of story. If you're here illegally, you need to go. Now, I do favor, um, to some extent, a, a, an exception for what they call dreamers, um, people who have been here for at least 10 years and who are naturalized and who have integrated into American society, people for whom English is their first language and they've never been to the country they technically are, uh, or, or they have not been to the country that they technically are a part of since they were a baby. <clears throat> I actually had one of those guys, he did some stuff for me a long time ago, and he was a cool guy. Um, didn't agree with me. He was a radical leftist. He uh, watched Hassan Abi, uh, so you, you can make of that what you will. Uh, he was he was really adamant about the whole leftist thing, and I wonder how much of that is just the fact that the left wants anybody to be able to come here and do whatever they want, whereas the right wants nobody to be able to come here and do what they want. 
when it used to be that everybody was like, well, if you come here illegally, you can get your ass out. You know, that's the way it used to be, and that's the way it should be. And But I don't want him to get kicked out. He's actually trying to do real work. He, he knows fluent English. He is a participating, productive member of society. He does not deserve to be booted out. And I would favor some kind of, uh, like an examination program or whatever, to assess people before just booting them out unceremoniously to see if they have, in fact, integrated into society. A uh, big part of which would be learn English, because it turns out most of the people who come here illegally never even bother learning English, never even bother becoming part of American society. They carve out their own microcosms elsewhere, and then they just, you know, basically all the, um, all the people who are here illegally thrive off of each other. They build their own sub-economy that uh, other Americans don't get to participate in. And it's not as big of a deal when it's just some people that are there, you know, doing commerce and getting along, whatever. And that's not as big of a deal. And I probably wouldn't have as much to complain about if that was the only way that it ever was. Um, you have no shortage of people who come here illegally and it's not just that they carve out their own little areas um, or they have their own little subgroups within the town or city or whatever. There's no shortage of places that have seriously dangerous areas because it's full of people who are poor and poverty tends to breed crime. Um, crime tends to breed poverty too. It's sort of a vicious cycle. But they're poor. They're here illegally so they can't work legally. So they can't, they cannot make money in a legal way, which means that there's no practical legal barrier there for them to uh, not like sell drugs or whatever. Um, so it does make illegal um, trades that where you can make a lot of money quickly more attractive. Y you see where this is going. It, the whole system is basically set up to where the only way that these people can work is if they either do something blatantly illegal or if they work for businesses under the table for cash and no records are made that they ever did. And, they, and then there's no such thing as a minimum wage. There's no problem. You don't have to worry about them undercutting American workers. Like, like you, you, you can't set that minimum so that they can't undercut American labor because if it's off the record, no books, all cash, whatever, there's no evidence. There's just, there is no minimum wage law for someone who's here illegally. End of story. They can find work and they can do that work and they don't have to care. I keep checking my levels. When I do this, I'm checking my mic levels because I'm worried the batteries will die. But if you're here illegally, you don't care because you need to make money, you need to survive. And ideally, you know, if, if a lot of people who come here illegally are economic migrants and they send money out of the country back to the other country they came from to their families that are still there, to their family members that are still there because not everybody can just come here illegally. Um, it's extremely dangerous, so it's pretty inhumane allowing this because then people end up doing it and dying in, in large quantities. A lot of people die at the southern border every year, not because they got shot in the head by border patrol, but because they went for a swim and the swim went for them. That's actually catchy. I don't like it. So the illegals need to go, period. Maybe check people to see if they've integrated into society sufficiently. Maybe then give them a fast path to citizenship. I don't know. The, you, you have to do something. You can't just screw people over. But I do still favor an aggressive removal of all illegal aliens. Now, moving on. Asylum seekers, again, same thing. Have you, have you tightly integrated into American society? Are, are you a participating and um, are you a stand-up citizen, you know, just that just doesn't happen to have citizenship? If so, we'll let you stay here. We'll, we'll let you on a path to citizenship. We will, we will work towards getting you legal so that you, person who is actually benefiting society here, can further integrate and become a productive member. But all the other asylum seekers have to go because the vast majority of them are economic migrants. It, it's just, at this point, it's so screwed up, they just need to go. The H-1B visas, that kind of stuff that's used to just bring in 
tons and tons of people. And I, and I know it's not just H-1B, but that's what a lot of people refer to the whole, you know, worker visa program, all of them buy. All of those got to go. Got to go. We don't need a bunch of foreign workers. There's no shortage of foreign workers that have already shown up to our door. They all, they all got to go. All the foreign workers need to go. And I don't care how much you complain, how much you claim that these people are going to do jobs Americans just won't do. I don't buy it for one second. Because I'll tell you right now, if you need money, you're going to do work. <laughs> Good luck. You know, right now we have a situation where companies post fake job ads, but nobody can actually get a job because all the job ads are bogus just so that the company looks like they're not having issues. You know, people are having a hard time finding jobs despite there being more unfilled jobs than ever, theoretically, supposedly. You know, it, it, it's insane. <clears throat> so get rid of the illegals for sure. Get rid of the uh, asylum seekers. Yeah, get rid of the H-1Bs. And, and here's the thing. If you do decide through this assessment idea that I've got, that they are a benefit to society. They are actually part of American society rather than just being this outside element floating around inside it. You know, they are productive members of American society that have integrated. As a general rule, all of them have to go. Why do they have to go? Because the United States has a massive housing crisis. There is nowhere for anyone to live. Oh yeah, sure, there are places to live, but the prices are through the roof because there's nowhere for anyone to live once all the housing's filled up. <clears throat> if you have if you have 100 people and you have 80 houses, then you have a lot of people that don't have anywhere to live or that have to room up. If you have 200 people and you have 80 houses, now you've got a real serious problem on your hands. Now, people either have to room up <laughs> five or six to a, to a, to a and what used to be a single family residence or a lot of people are just going to go homeless. So it forces people to cluster in these insane numbers that it becomes unsanitary very quickly, hostile. Um, a lot of the symptoms of poverty come right back. Some of these living conditions that people are in are horrible. No one will complain to the landlord because they're worried if they get evicted, they'll never get somewhere that's that price again. You know, it's bad for everyone. And the prices go through the roof. If you have 200 people attempting to get into 80 places to live, the prices are unreal. But that's what we're in right now. We are in unreal housing prices. If you get rid of millions and millions, there could be 30 million for all I know, there could be more than that for all I know, of illegal aliens, fake asylum seekers that are really ultimately just illegal aliens, and foreign visa workers that come over here based on this notion of having credentials, but really they're just slave labor for large corporations that don't want to pay for an actual American to do it um, and, and worry about, you know, oh, oh, but an American might, might quit and go to another job, but these people, we're sponsoring them, so they're slaves. They, they can't leave us or they'll, have, or they'll get deported and lose everything. All the life that they build up here, they'll lose it if they cross us. All that shit needs to go. And what happens when it goes? Now, you don't have 200 people trying to get into the same house. And these numbers are fake. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. <clears throat> if you have 330 million people in the United States, the number is actually higher than that, and you remove 30 million of them, that is 1 11th. I don't know exactly what that is, but I think it's about, uh, is that 9%? I want to say it's 9%. Um, you remove 9% of the people, most of whom are illegals, thus can't hold a, a job that does things legitimately, and probably can't get housing in a legitimate place because that requires things like background checks and IDs and, and all this other stuff that certifies you are who you say you are and that you, you're here legally and things like that. You know, they can only do things in ways that... Um, that basically lead into poverty and slave-like conditions, you know, you get rid of all that, and now you don't have landlords who have five people to an apartment or a house. Um, you don't have these, these horrific living conditions. You don't have every low-level job that it, that, that's possible. You don't, have a, you don't have jobs, first of all, siphoned off 
by people who aren't even able to legally work them, but are anyway because companies don't care. As long as they don't get caught, it doesn't matter. They're saving money. You know, now they might have to go legal. Now they might have to play by the rules. Now they might have to actually let Americans who live here and who participate in society and integrate and are naturalized and all that already, they might actually have to hire those people. Oh, what a shock. And guess what happens? Guess what happens when you have a lot of jobs that are open and you don't have enough people to fill them in society? If there are a lot of jobs and not a lot of workers, wages go up. If there's a lot of housing and not a lot of people asking for housing, housing prices go down. <clears throat> so, I don't understand why the left in particular is not absolutely adamant that all the illegals and all the foreign visa workers and all the fake asylum seekers, all of them have to go. I don't understand it because what are the things that supposedly are left-right issues that the left screams about the most? Well, I wouldn't say the most, but a lot. Oh, we want a higher minimum wage. Why? Oh, because we need to make more money. Wages need to go up. So we, we're, we're talking about a higher minimum wage, but what they really want is wages to go up. So we, they want people to make more money. How do you make more money? Get paid a higher wage. How do you get paid a higher wage? Get rid of all the people clogging up the jobs at illegally low, below the minimum wage pay rates because they're basically slaves. Now there's all these job openings. Now the cost to hire a worker might go up, but that means wages go up. You have more wages, higher pay. Sounds like exactly what the 15, 20, $25 minimum, minimum wage um, politics people sounds like what they want. What they want is a higher wage. Now it's not a government forced higher wage, but when, when companies cannot find enough people to fill their positions because there's not as many workers flooding the market, guess what? The higher wages come and the government doesn't have to do a damn thing to make it happen at that point. Housing? Oh, housing is way too high. We want you know, <clears throat> we want uh, housing assistance, low, you, what is it? So-called affordable housing. Guess what? If the housing prices are not being driven exponentially higher, inflated outrageously due to having a huge number of people here illegally that are nonetheless, they got to live somewhere. And guess what? If a landlord can shove six people into one apartment for $1,000 a month each, instead of one family for 3,000. Well, hey, they're making 6,000 instead of 3,000. And the people there are lucky they're there, so they don't have to do any repairs. You get the idea. <clears throat> living, in, living conditions improve. Housing prices go down. So, do you want housing prices to go down, wages to go up, living conditions to improve? Then you boot out all of the illegals, fake asylum seekers, and foreign visa workers. It, it's a very straightforward formula. And it is <clears throat> perhaps the mechanism by which you would do it is not what your modern Democrat would inherently support just because, you know, no human is illegal and all this kind of stuff. This whole notion that every single person holds some sort of inherent value, which is not true because value is actually determined by other people, not by yourself. Um, value is what do you contribute to everybody else, not what do you think you're worth. But that, that's, that's your sense of self-worth. But value ultimately comes down to what can you do for that person and that person and that person in society. That's, that's how your value is really measured. And if someone is here basically, oh yeah, I forgot something. Oh my God, how did I forget that? All not all, but there are quite a few people who are here illegally, particularly asylum seekers, so-called asylum seekers, um, who are given thousands and thousands of dollars worth of government welfare on a monthly basis. That is a lot of government spending. Now, that money probably comes from the government taking out more debt or charging you more taxes. Do you want taxes to go down? Get rid of all of the illegals, foreign asylum uh, for foreign eight, 
visa workers and fake asylum seekers. And guess what? Taxes just might go down. Maybe. Now, the government doesn't like to reduce taxes, but the point is <laughs> that money will not be burning. If you can't go up, you can at least go down more slowly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. If, if you can't boost things, at least stop falling quite as fast so that the landing isn't so hard and you don't splatter. Uh, but that that's that's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. You, you ditch 30 million illegals and all of a sudden everything gets better. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, the economy can't take the hit from that many people leaving the economy. Let me tell you a little secret. Sure, there are quite a few of these people that buy stuff from Walmart or whatever because they have to buy things from stores. They have to they have to drive vehicles and stuff. While there are still going to be quite a few of these people buying stuff from these big businesses, <laughs> these big box stores, these you know, these nice big name retailers, most of them participate in their own sub economies. Um, I cannot possibly explain to you how many taquerias there are near where I live. There are so many Hispanic churches and Hispanic food places. It, it is amazing to me. And we're not, we're not talking about like a border state like Texas or whatever. This is North Carolina. We're nowhere near the border, but there's quite a few Hispanic places. I have seen areas where um, churches have just shut down or whatever. Like churches have been replaced by Hispanic churches. I'm talking Spanish on all the signage and everything. And it's it's not because there's this high demand for a bunch of, you know, random like native, you know, American people. It, there's not this like proliferation of people who suddenly want to do business with places that have Spanish signage. It's because there's a lot of people who don't know English because they came here and never naturalized and integrated. It's a lot of people who do not want to be a part of this society. And so what do they do? Right. You know what? Hey, hey, landlord, I'll give you this cash that you don't have to report if, you, if you'll rent me out this slot here. And we'll only do business in cash with other people like us. So guess what? Okay, the economy can't take it. Well, they're not participating in the economy that you are a part of. Oh, granted, they might be buying some things from Walmart from time to time. They might be buying used cars from time to time. Somehow. Don't know how that works with the whole, you know, license plate, driver license thing. Although a lot of places have started giving license plates and driver licenses to people who are illegal anyway. But they're not, they're not participating in your economy. They're not participating in the normal American economy. They're participating in sub-economies in little, um, what is the name? Enclave. Enclave is the word I've been looking for this whole time. They have their own economic enclaves that they do business in. And if you're not part of it, then the only time they do business with you is if they have no other choice. Because especially if, you, if they don't know how to speak your language, why would they do business with you? And this is the other problem. That means that if they set up businesses near you and you don't know their language, you also can't do business with them. So it's a double whammy. Because of the failure to integrate, failure to learn English, failure to become a part of the same culture, you can't do business with them either. If you want, now nothing's stopping you from walking in and doing so, except, you know, what are you going to do if you don't know Spanish, they don't know English, it's going to be a tough time. You, you can, you might be able to make it happen, but it's going to be tough. One of you is going to have to budge. So, and, and that would be the exception. Most people are not going to leave their comfort zone and walk into a taqueria and buy a bunch of food not knowing any Spanish. It's, it's, I don't foresee this happening very often. And there are some adventurous people, but the vast majority of people are going to stay in their comfort zone. And that's kind of the problem is that the United States has become a comfort zone for people who don't really want to be a part of the United States culture, who don't really want to 
be a part of the same society as us stupid English-speaking people, but instead want to come here and carve out their own societies that are distinctly separate. Now, we have, um, we have in the past had states attempt to secede from the Union. It did not end very well. But what we are witnessing, what we have been witnessing really my whole life, is the slow, steady secession of portions of our society from the culture of the country as a whole. These people are not, it's, it's not that they're not in America, it's not that they're not a part of America, because, I mean, they're here, they do have to participate on some base level, but when given a choice, they self-segregate, and there's just no interaction to speak of between you and them. So they're not people you can necessarily go to and say, hey, hi, neighbor, we let's, uh, let's get along and let's help each other out, and because they'll be like, okay? Like, what are you saying? I don't know English. Or what are you supposed to do? And I know that and one of the worst things about all of this is that I know for a fact that anybody listening to this is going to have a knee-jerk reaction and say, well, you're just a racist piece of shit. You're, you're just a racist bigot. You, you just hate people from other places. You just, you just, you're full of hate. But I'm not. This is not about hating people. This is about policy which is not the same thing. Now, the attempt to equivocate hatred of a people for being people to wanting people who broke the law to get here or who lied to come in here or who are being exploited and shouldn't be here for their own good, wanting them to not be here because of all of those reasons, none of which are good for anybody except arguably big businesses, um, it, I don't understand how that's hatred. I don't understand how it's hate for me to not want somebody who broke the law to be here to be here. I don't understand how it's hate to not want somebody who claimed that they're seeking asylum, even though what they really are is coming from a country that just is economically poor and they want, they basically want to siphon some of that American cash off because we have not caught up, our policy hasn't caught up with the reality of the world. <clears throat> I don't see the hate. Likewise, the visas. If someone is scammed into coming over here on an H-1B visa with fake credentials from India, okay, I get your argument that they, hey, they have to be paid the same as an American worker, which isn't entirely true. Maybe legally they have to be paid on par with an American. But the slavery aspect, uh, hey, guess what? If you lose your job, the company fires you or you quit, well you're going to get deported in fairly short order. You don't have very much time to find a new sponsor. <laughs> you better hope you can find a new sponsor. Guy who got scammed. Guy who's living in an apartment with six other guys. Guy who's living in miserable, dirty conditions because you were screwed with. You were lied to. You know, you get the idea. What are you going to do? I don't see how it's hateful to say, I don't want people to get scammed. I don't want people to die attempting to come here illegally uh, or to come here and claim false asylum because they're told that here is better than there. I don't see how that's hateful. Now, what I do hate is the notion that we shouldn't have a country because we shouldn't have borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. I hate the notion that the United States can save the world. We can't. I hate the notion that the United States somehow can accept a massive number of people coming into the country, largely unskilled labor, and everything will magically be fine. Everything will not be fine. If you have, if you have uh, let's say, a pie. If you have a pie and you have eight people, you can cut it up into eight slices. If, if another person comes... Well, okay, we can cut it up into nine or ten or whatever. You know, we can... You know, let's, say, let's say two more people show up. There's eight people. Two more people show up. You slice it into ten instead of eight. Well, now you got ten slices instead of eight. And uh, how much smaller are those slices? Well, 
they're not that much smaller. I mean, one tenth is 0.1, one eighth is 0.125. So it's a sliver, you know, everybody contributes a sliver. Um, and, and so these two other people benefit, but everybody else does lose. They just don't lose much. Now, let's say there's eight people and eight more people show up. Well, now everybody has to give half of what they've got. Instead of going from 0.125 to 0.1, which now I'm doing the math in my head, that's tw like 20% of what they've got. Now it's 50%. And it just, it scales like that. And now everybody has half a slice of pie. The people who came because they heard America has all of these nice 1 8 pie slices, now gets half a slice of pie, and they feel deceived, so they hate the place because they were lied to, and they came here, they're stuck here, and now they, and they were lied to about it because now they don't get what they were promised. You can see this in the, the whole protest saying, New York needs to give us more, you know, all that kind of stuff. The people that were already here that were going to get 1 8 of a slice of pie well, now they've got 1 16th of a slice of pie. Now they've lost half of what they were supposed to get by virtue of being here and doing all the right things up to that moment to get a slice of pie. Why do they get half? Well, supposedly they get half because of some nobility, like just th this notion that it's it's noble to sacrifice some of what you have so that every, you should share what you have with other people so that everybody can have a piece and everybody can be happy. Well, nobody's happy because now everybody has half of what they wanted and it's not even like they're taking a little piece. They're taking half the pie. And that's basically a really good analogy for what's happening with mass migration to the United States. It needs to stop. It needs to be cut off. It needs to be desperately cut off. And the people that already are here need to be purged quickly so that they stop taking so much of the pie. It doesn't solve all of our problems by, by no means. It, it actually solves only a few. It, it, but the thing is, if you have a system where everybody is having to give up a portion of what they have to people who break the law to come here, to people who lie about the reason they come here, and to people who come here because they were tricked into coming here to be slaves for huge multinational corporations. Well, I, I have a bit of a problem with that. I have, a I have a little bit of a problem with that. I don't want to see people enslaved legally. I don't want to see people breaking the law. I don't want to see people bypassing the immigration system. You can argue all day long the immigration system is broken. And granted, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a hot mess. It's really hard for people who legitimately want to be here and have family here and like just like bringing someone having their parent or whatever to come in it's hard to get them in it takes years should not take years to process someone for immigration into the country at the same time it shouldn't be easy to get here either it should be hard to get here in general it should be hard to get in in general because if you don't make it difficult to just come on in, then infinite people can spill across the border. And here's the thing. This is ultimately the problem. It doesn't solve anything for India, for Costa Rica, you know, for, for any of these other countries, you know, Ecuador, whatever. It does not fix these other countries. You can let all of these people in the country, into the United States or Canada or whatever, you can let all these people come in. You can be like, well, we're, we have benevolent intentions. We want to, you know, we want to, them to improve their lives by coming and being a part of our society. The problem is that every person dilutes the resources in the society unless they can produce at least on par with what they take, if not more. And if you, if you have these countries that have economic problems, that have poor leadership and so on, people need to stay there and fix their own country rather than come here. Because when they come here, what happens is that we become a sewer, a pressure release valve for the economies of other countries that are poorly run, that the citizens need to be taking control of and need to be, they need to be cleaning their own house. But if they can just come into our house and crap all over the floor, they're not solving the problem in the, in the country they come from and they're making things worse for you here. Neither person, ne neither places is better for it. And then, you know, basically nobody's happy 
If, if you had to make a choice, if I give you a simple choice between one person being happy and no people being happy, you would choose one, right? Generally speaking, yes, you would choose one. That's the problem with mass migration to the United States. It makes everybody miserable. It reduces the quality of life for both the people in the United States and the people that come to the United States thinking it's going to be great <clears throat> until they realize that 30 million other people had the same idea and diluted all the resources. And at some point, this is the problem, at some point, finite resources are depleted. At some point, there is no more to give. And that is what I will leave you with. Everything has a point where it hits zero. Your compassion might be infinite, but something tells me your pocketbook is not. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Take care.